Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be looking at Pythagoras Theorem. So what Pythagoras Theorem is, is it's a way we can calculate the length of sides in triangles. Uh, he developed it a long time ago and we actually use it a lot in a lot of modern day engineering and mathematics and it's quite widely used. Uh, so what we're looking at here is a right angle triangle. So this theorem we're looking at it applies in right angle triangles. And right angle triangles we know have to have one right angle and the longest side is opposite the right angle. So this side here is the hypotenuse in our case. So Pythagoras uses notation for his hypotenuse and he calls it C. Or the notation which we'll be using is C for our hypotenuse and for our other two sides which are not our hypotenuse we will label them side B and side A. So what Pythagoras theorem says is that for any triangle, if we take the length of the hypotenuse and we square it, then this will be equal to the length of the other two sides squared and added together. So it will be the length of side A squared plus the length of side B squared. So when we square something, that just we means we multiply it by itself. So Pythagoras theorem says that C multiplied by C, and these dots just mean multiplied by, equals A multiplied by A plus B multiplied by B. And this is just in lengths. So if we were to do a more graphical example, if we say side A is of length 3 meters and side B is of length 4 meters, then what this says is that we can work out the, the side length of side C. So if we take side A and we square it, so graphically this looks something like this. So we take side A, we know it's 3 meters long, and we make it into a square. So we draw up this square of 3 by 3. So you can see that is a 3 by 3 square. Then if we take side B, and we square that, so it's 4 meters, so we know that this is going to make a 4 by 4 square. So we take side B, we square side B, and we create this square here. Sorry, these are more rectangles. But we create this 4 by 4 square here, it's saying if we square these two, so side A squared gives us 9, so it's just 3 times 3, and side B squared gives us 16, which is just 4 times 4. We can see there's 16 squares. Then this is going to be equal to C squared. So using our formula, C squared is going to be equal to our A squared, which is 3 squared, plus our b squared, which is 4 squared. c squared will be equal to the 9 plus 16, so this gives us c squared. But then we need to know to find the length of c, we don't want the length of c squared, we want the length of c. So what we need to do is take the square root. So we know that c squared is equal to 9 plus 16, and that 9 plus 16 is equal to 25. So c squared is equal to the square root of 25. So c is equal to the square root of 25, and we know that the square root of 25 is equal to 5. So we this side length here of C should be 5 meters. And graphically what that means is that if we were to draw a square here, so we draw another square up this way, and we'd square the length here, we can see that this c squared, so 5 times 5, a 5 by 5 square is formed, 
and we can kind of just color off bits here and we can see that there should be 25 squares here and 25 squares in total here. So I'll count them off in two different colors. So we should have nine, which correspond to the red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we should have 16 green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's Pythagoras' theorem. It says if we take the two squares which are not the hypotenuse, then they should equal the value of the hypotenuse squared. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and that's what it would look like graphically. But that generally, we tend just to stick to this formula and say c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. I've got a whole host of examples for you guys. Um, thank you.